Well, True Crime Streets of New York. So this is a game that came out, it was released by Activision back in 2005. So I recorded a little bit of gameplay, I'm just going to talk about it. Now when you open the box to this game, <laughs> right away, uh, you get a disclaimer. This game is not approved, endorsed, or connected in any way to the New York City Police Department, quote, NYPD. The game is fictional and does not represent the views, policies, or practices of the NYPD. Um, I'll leave all jokes aside on that one, but no, truthfully, um, they had to put that out there because this is a kind of game where the person is a police officer. And as you can imagine, this is the Grand Theft Auto era, the Mafia era, the Saints Row era. This is an era where uh, people like myself are just getting into the fold of open world games where you can do what you want. And as you can imagine, a game where you can do whatever you want, <laughs> where you're a cop, yeah. Now this is actually the sequel to another good game called True Crime Streets of L.A. So they did one in L.A., so naturally you do one in New York. Now I think, personally, this should be redone and they could do True Crime Chicago, or True Crime uh, Miami, True Crime Dallas, True Crime whatever. Um, but I, I don't see them making another game like this, especially in this climate, because of the controversy around being a police officer and blah, 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 you know, the relationship that the community has to uh, policing. But nonetheless, um, this game was released in 2005, like I said, by Activision. Um, this is a great series, even though it's just two games. Um, now, there is Sleeping Dogs, which is a game that I've been playing on my Xbox Series X. Um, that game is a spiritual successor to the True Crime game. In fact, as I understand it, that game was being developed as a True Crime Hong Kong game. Um, or True Crime Shanghai, I forget the city, I think it's Hong Kong. But that game, because they lost the license um, to True Crime, they changed the title, and I think they switched developers. But nonetheless, Sleeping Dogs is basically the last true crime game, quote unquote. And if you play that game, um, especially if you play it on your Series X, it has a lot of the characteristics of this game. I would argue that um, the mechanics are better than what you get in this game, but uh, there's really nothing that beats like the American Cop open world genre um, as you can see some excellent driving on my part I literally proved why they would never let me behind the wheel of the cop car um, and no I don't drive like this in real life but let's talk about some things about this game there's the uh, comp stat on the map a um, couple things about this game so it's set in New York City it's not actually all of New York it's just Manhattan which most of you who are not from New York probably think that's all New York is anyway but um, this game is set in uh, Manhattan only. It's a pretty well-versed map of Manhattan as somebody who grew up in New York City. Um, <laughs> but basically, this game, um, it's set in Manhattan. It's pretty detailed, street for street. Um, is it scaled perfectly? Is every actual, every business perfect in it? No, of course not. But overall, you actually get a pretty good feel for, you know, Manhattan, the different streets. Now, one thing, the only thing I would say is, you know, sometimes I feel like I'm driving around a little too much. Like, it takes a while to get across avenues. Now, that's realistic because traffic is terrible in the city and streets can be long, like, especially between avenues. But, um, you know, there are times when, like in this case, you see me here, not only am I poorly driving, but I'm just trying to get over to the crime I want to solve. And, you know, it's going to take me a minute. Now, the driving mechanics in this game, I think, are pretty rough. Um, I, I saw a video about Streets of L.A., and I have to relate that to this, to this game as well. The mechanics for driving the cars are, are pretty rough. Um, I always feel like I'm on ice. When I make a sharp turn, I slide out all the time. Um, the cars, sometimes they, they're herky-jerky in their acceleration. It's not just a lag from my capture card again. This is just like the way the, the game feels as I'm driving. 
Um, so I actually hit a lot of people by accident, even though it's funny. Um, you know, I'm not trying to. So the driving mechanics in this are a little rough. I'm not in love with the controls, hitting L2 to enter and exit the vehicles, hitting select to turn on the siren. Um, I think true, I think, uh, Sleeping Dogs has better, uh, mechanics for the controls than what this game has. But nonetheless, even with that said, the actual gameplay when you're fighting is still fun. So the on foot gameplay and mechanics feel better than the driving. If that's easy to understand. So you, this, it doesn't hurt you as much when you're fighting um, as it does when you're driving. Now, it does not feel great when you're shooting. I'm not going to lie. Um, shooting in this game, I'm lukewarm on. It's fun to do it just because of the character and the setting of the game. But it's not smooth. And considering that this is the same... Uh, these are the same people that are going to make, uh, you know, and release Call of Duty. And actually, at this point, they've already released the Call of Duty. Um, it's kind of funny to complain about shootings. But yes, it, it's, not, it's not the best. So why is this game fun? Well, first of all, you're playing as a cop in one of a couple of major cities, right? So that's fun. Uh, number two, uh, because you're a cop, you could flash your badge when you go up to people and ask, you know, and, you know, if they stop, you can stop people on a dime to, uh, you know, just skipping ahead here. You can stop people on a dime. This is me doing like a chase after somebody who had stolen a vehicle and stolen a second vehicle. Um, now you see here, I'm going to go up to this cop. I'm going to flash my badge. And he's going to get out of his car. So that's pretty cool, right? I mean, that's just like one of the little things about actually playing as a cop is that you get police resources. Whether it's taking cop cars, taking cop equipment, um, you know, having the dispatch to tell you where all the crimes are, and then getting to solve random crimes, whether it's small things on the street. You see right here, waiters fighting over a tip. So you can go to the restaurant and actually deal with the fight directly. You know, or you can uh, you can ignore it and just continue on your, your merely way. Um, you can see here is the weapon. That, the shooting in this game. Now I could fire random shots in the air to try to stop him, and that's what happened here. You he heard the gunfire and he stopped because he's not like a hardened criminal. The gangsters and stuff like that, they're not going to stop when you fire a weapon. They'll either shoot back or they'll keep running. Um. So it just depends. But you're going to get a lot of random crimes, which is fun. Um, that's, to me, the most fun part about this game, the random action crimes. So you are literally just going down the street, boom. You're going to get alerted about a, a fight at a bar or a club or a stolen vehicle or a robber um, or a riot or a fender bender where there's a scuffle, things like that. Um, and to me, that's the value of this game. This game is not going to be better than Grand Theft Auto at its general missions. It's not better than Grand Theft Auto at its general driving. It's not better than Grand Theft Auto or Saints Row at gunplay. I would argue that Saints Row, you know, gunplay is, is right up there with Grand Theft Auto, and their driving is even better than this. So what does this game do better? Um, the hand-to-hand -hand combat is pretty good, and the immersion as a police officer and the detail of... The map, not necessarily the interior, because you can't go into any random business, but you'll get called to random businesses. That's what makes this game fun. So that's the value of true crime, um, if you've never played it. Now, if you played this when you were younger, in the past, like I said, True Crime LA and New York, and New York are 2004, 2005 games. So if you already came through this PlayStation 2 era like I did, this is an easy buy. You, this, you, you have to buy this game. If you've never played this game, but you're interested in playing as a police officer, I recommend it. You know, another fun game, which I'll probably do a video on at some point, is Bad Boys. Uh, that's actually, yes, that is a Bad Boys like in the, the movie uh, Bad Boys with Will Smith and uh, Martin Lawrence. Um, that's actually a fun game. Those, that game, you're also a police officer. Um... But anyway, you know, this game, like I said, the value of it is not to be better than Grand Theft Auto or even better than Saints Row when it comes to 
um, you know, the regular gameplay, just like the, the running around, the shooting and all that. That's not the strength of this game, okay? That's not what you're, you're playing this game for. Um, what you're playing this game for, and this is, we run into the subway. Um, what you're playing this game for is the immersion as a police officer in actual New York City. Um, or in L.A. You play this game so you can drive around and solve random crimes. You're not playing this game because <laughs> you want something that's equal to Grand Theft Auto or Saints Row. So once you get beyond that, once you do that, then you're fine. You know, I, I think that's really like the most important thing. Is once you get past that in your mind, once you get your, your mind wrapped around that, then you're going to be okay. Because then you're going to be able to just enjoy the game for what it is. Um, so again, True Crime, New York City, the sequel to True Crime, Streets of L.A. Um, it's a fun game, great uh, great replayability. It's like a high fun factor game. Do the graphics hold up? Come on, this isn't about graphics. Is the gameplay equal to Grand Theft Auto? I don't think so overall. But what makes it fun is the immersion as a cop. Be able to go up to random people, uh, frisky random people. You can see there I tackle her by mistake. That's another thing with the mechanics. I didn't want to tackle her. I wanted to catch up to her and frisk her like I'm about to do to this person. Right? Now, I could plant evidence on this person or let them go. I choose to let them go. But when you have somebody in that position, you can actually you can hit them, you can plant evidence, or you can let them go. Um, if there's something on them, then you could actually place them under arrest. So, you know, and then this is me approaching a fender bender here. So, yeah, and again, uh, the character's name in this is uh, Marcus, by the way. He has a backstory, which I kind of have forgot. But <laughs> um, another thing about this game is licensing. So, I can't really have audio because, unfortunately... Um, there's a lot of like rap rap music from that era in this game, and I'm sure that like if this game was put on Game Pass, they probably would have a problem with like the licensing. Uh, that's like typical random gameplay there. Like some the cop, I arrest the guy, knock him out, and then the cab hits me. <laughs> so there you go. But it's still a high fun factor game, and as always, you play games like this, you're gonna have a great time. Um, because this is like pure fun in video games. It's not, you know, you don't take it too seriously. Um, don't worry about graphics. It's not about unlocking things. It's just about going around and having random fun. Um, and fun is what it's all about. And that's what we do here in the corner arcade. Thanks everybody.